Okay, everyone, welcome back. This is going to be episode number two, or lesson number two, of our Beginner's Java course. So what we're going to talk about now is uh, a little bit more difficult than what we talked about last lesson, and that's going to be allowing users to enter their own variables. Now, we're going to assume for the time being that your users are very... Uh, cooperable and they only enter in the types of variables that we want them to. That's not always true, but we will get into data handling later so we can handle if they're not putting in what they should be. So, let's assume that we take a normal variable uh, and we'll call it int number. So, we'll just simply start by initializing it to zero, meaning that we're setting the initial value of it to zero. Uh, it's underlined right now because it hasn't been used yet. So if we want to allow the user to put in a variable, uh, we need to import a, a method called scanner. So this is going to once again throw in a couple of lines that are really ugly. Um, again, once we get through scanner, there's no more ugly stuff for a little while. So I want to say that before we move on, because yeah, scanner's fairly ugly. So we're going to import, um, geez, what is it? Uh, java.util.scanner? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So we import scanner. Uh, that actually has to be outside of our class. So it has to be way up here. And it's going to complain that we haven't used it, which is fine. So down here, we're going to make a new scanner object called input. And we're going to set it equal to new scanner system dot in. Now, I know I said this in the first episode, and I'm saying it again now, do not worry about what that means. When we get into arrays and objects, you guys will have a better understanding of what new means and what how all this sort of plays together. For now, just know that this line right here, or well, this line right here lets us use scanner, and then this line down here simply makes it so we can use scanner inside of main by using input. So let's do this line. We'll do system.out.println and we're going to say enter a number. And again, we're going to assume that your user is friendly and we'll just enter a number. So here we're going to do number equals input.nextInt. So when we do this, we'll then output number after. So system.out.println. The number input was, and then we'll do that, plus number. So when we do a plus followed by anything inside of a system.out.println, it simply spits it out as long as it's in between these uh, uh, parentheses. Okay, so when we give this a run, you'll notice that it, we come down here and it says enter a number, which correlates with this line. So we'll come back down here and we'll enter the number 7. So as you can see, the number input was 7. It highlights our number 7 in that ugly teal color that nobody can ever read. Um, and that's the basics of output. Now, there is more to it than just that, though. I mean, if that's all there was to taking in variables, Java would be the world's greatest language. It's not always that easy. So instead, let's do something like this, where we make a string, and we'll call it my string equals. And again, we're just putting two quotation marks, so it comes up as being empty. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. OK, so. What we're going to do here is we're going to do my string equals input dot next. 
And so what that does is it means that the next thing that is taken in, it's supposed to be lowercase next, by the way, um, the next thing that's taken in will go into my string. So once again, let's put in a line here and we'll say enter anything. Again, that's not entirely true because there are certain things that could break the string input, but for now we're not going to worry about those. And then we're going to do a system.out.println my, or er, the value of my string is, and then plus my string. And so when we give this a save and a run, you'll notice that it asks us for the number for the first part. We'll again hit seven and enter anything. We'll say, hello, beginners, Java. And you'll notice that it says, hello. Now, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this. So the way that this input.next is working here is it's reading until it sees white space. So when I said hello beginners Java, it read this first word and then nothing else. So that brings up the question of how do we do that? And unfortunately, the answer is a little convoluted. Um, so we're not going to get into it right away because for now, while you guys are still practicing the early stages of Java, we're going to stick mostly with numbers. Um, I'm going to try to keep it as num like as simple as possible, but it's difficult. So we're going to comment out all of this. So we can come up here to source, toggle comment, which is control seven. Uh, I won't be doing that again in the future. So try to remember control seven. Uh, all that does is it turns all these into comments, meaning it simply puts slash slash before them. And what a comment does is when this compiles, it no longer looks at that stuff at all. So I'm going to again take this and toggle it um, or I could just type slash slash in front of it. So let me just move all that to the left. I'll indent it again later if I should need to. Um, okay so what I'm going to talk about for the remainder of this lesson is how order of operations is handled inside of Java. The answer is it's handled in essentially the same way as it is in the human world. So let's create some variables. We'll create int a equals five, uh, comma b equals seven, c equals 10, d equals 15. This is also a valid way to declare multiple variables and initialize them. Um, it only works with certain types. Uh, you can't do that with something like a string uh, in using that same sort of method. Well, I suppose you kind of could, but not as easily. So for now, just stick to int, double, uh, float, stuff like that for these numbers. So what would happen if we were to do a plus b times c divided by, uh, actually let's do it like this, d divided by a plus b multiplied by c. So I know a lot of people would, it's kind of weird that it's giving me an error on that. Pretty sure that's a division operator, right? Clearly, I use division a whole ton in my uh, professional life. Okay, so yeah, we'll just toss that in there, and that and then it's happy. It was unhappy because we were just trying to output all these variables without using them in any way. So I can see why that's uh, an issue. So if we output this, there's a few different ways that this could be resolved. Now, most people think of the, the English way of doing this, which is PEMDAS parentheses, exponents, multiplication, 
division, addition, subtraction. Which is great, because that's technically exactly how it's done here, with a few notable differences. It's p, m slash d, a slash s. So, that means that multiplication and division have the exact same uh, importance. And it evaluates from left to right. So, comma, L, T, R. So, and that's the same up here as well, L, T, R. So, what we have here is we're going to start this off by having 15 divided by 5 equals 3. And then that's going to leave us with 3 plus 7 multiplied by 10. Let me add my comments here. So what that should leave us with, because again it's going to look at this and go, okay that's addition, oh but this is multiplication. So it's going to go multiplication, alright. Uh, 7 times 10 I'll just t sort of toss parentheses around it to show that we're working on it, equals 70. So then we're going to end up with 3 plus 70. And that's my guess on how this is going to go. I could be totally wrong. So we'll do the value of d slash a plus b multiplied by c. And go like that. And then plus, toss some quotes around that, and that'll make it so this prints out how we expect it to. So you'll notice that we did come out with the value that we were expecting, which is 73. Um, so that just kind of shows you guys the simple order of operations here. Uh, the final thing I sort of want to show you guys is called uh, camelback notation. So what camelback notation is, is when we are taking uh, a variable name, and this is strictly convention, but you see it so much in Java that I want to get you guys exposed to it early. So when you take a variable name, you'll see that I've done number, I've done input, I've done uh, a few other things. But when we have a, a name of something, it's important that we name it something meaningful and that the person who's reading it can read it easily. And Camelback notation sort of aims to do that. So this isn't something difficult, it's actually something that's very easy. And Camelback notation simply dictates that the first word in a phrase that is a variable is lowercase, and then the first letter of every word after that is capitalized. So for example, items on hand equals one or something like that or um, let's say float uh, price per item equals 1.57 or something along those lines so we end up with these sort of uh, okay so that's complaining because that's technically a double and it's right it is so when we when we have these different sort of variable names um, actually, let's just change it to double so it doesn't complain. The reason it wants to be in double is because it starts as a double and then casts to a float if you don't apply it. So that's neither here nor there. We'll get into that way later again. Um, so lastly, uh, another good example of where you're sort of getting too far might be something like string... Um, data returned from the database query if not fails equals blah. So something like this would be considered too much. Uh, try keeping, uh, just a quick rule of thumb, it's not always true, but try to keep your variable names between about six and ten letters, if possible. 
uh, you don't want something big like this because it's someone's going to see it and be like, what is that? So price per item is a little bit of a rule breaker at 11. Uh, I have some that are 15, but you know, once you get above a certain level, it just makes it harder to read rather than easier. All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining me, and oh, fuck, I'm over time. Ugh.